Uh, West Virginia Birth to Three is an organization I just heard of uh, this year. Was not familiar with their work and what they do. And Mr. Hornby, you might be surprised to know that uh, the legislature actually reimburses them for the work that they do. I believe we do. Not enough, apparently. Not but enough, we're going to find out more that, about that's that. That's what everybody says. <laughs> uh, in, in just a moment. And uh, Nicole Sargent, who we had on the show a couple years ago when she was working on some stuff with the Board of Education and... Uh, Voting that was about to take place is in studio with us. Nicole, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having us. You're here with Michelle, I think, right? Michelle I was McWilliams here with Coffee. Michelle. Uh-huh. Right? Yes. She's still an active Facebook she poster is. there. Yeah. Shout out to Michelle. Hi, right, Michelle. <laughs> and uh, Sandy, is it Norline? Yes. All right. Good. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. And I think we have Leslie Bowman on the TV, on the tel- telephone, I'm sorry. <laughs> Leslie? Yes, I'm here too. Hello. Great. Okay. Let's get everybody familiar with what exactly West Virginia Birth to Three is and the functions that it serves. Sure. So West Virginia Birth to Three is our state's early intervention program. Every state is required to provide early intervention services to infants and toddlers and their families under IDEA, which is the Individuals with Disability Education Act. Um, Every state can decide how they Um, give those services or provide them. But through our state, we do that through West Virginia Birth to Three. Traditionally, we've been Department of Health and Human Resources. Recently, with the reshuffle, we're Department of Health. Um, Sandy and I and Leslie are independent contractors with the state. So So you don't work for the state. We are not employed. You don't work for DHR. We do not. And we are not employed and aren't here as representatives of the program officially, but as people who are invested in this program, I've worked for Birth to Three for 21 years. You guys are about the same. Um, I've been here for 20 years, and I think, Leslie, a few more than that. Yeah, so we we have, we love our work. Um, what we do is we serve infants and toddlers who are either developmentally delayed, have a diagnosis, or what we call an established condition that we know leads to lifelong delays. We also serve infants and toddlers who don't have a diagnosis, but show through our evaluation process substantial delays in one of five early developmental areas. And we serve children who are at risk for delay. So children who have enough risk factors that we know they are likely to be delayed. And our goal is to step in during those crucial early years where we know brain plasticity or the ability to make permanent change in development is the highest. We go into families' homes, and we sit and work with families on coaching them, teaching the parents, empowering the parents to help with their child's development. Um, So it's very different than a medical model of therapy intervention. We use whatever's in the house, which varies very much from house to house. We use whoever's in the house. That's sometimes extended family, siblings, dogs. Um, we We go where children go, and we help parents to be empowered to promote development through play um, for their children. Mm-hmm. And, and and then, so how does a child get enrolled in this program? Is it through the doctor, through the parent, or what? Anyone can refer to birth to three. So physicians do and can refer, but parents can refer themselves. Um, grandparents, you know, family members, anyone who has concerns about a child's development can refer. Um, we do not require a physician's referral or prescription because we do not bill insurance. Mm-hmm. Our, st- our program is funded through the state of West Virginia um, from several different funding sources, including West Virginia and National Medicaid. If a child is enrolled in your program, let's say it's six months, do they typically stay in until the age of three all the way through? Sometimes and sometimes not. So if they have an established condition, for example, a child with Down syndrome is entitled to services until they age out at three years old. If a child is found just a certain percentage of delay that um, deems necessary to have our services, every year we reevaluate them regardless. And if they've made progress and they are functioning uh, closer to the closer to or at the level of their age typical peers, then they graduate from our services. We like to say we try to work ourselves out of a job. That's our goal. And what happens after the age of three to these children? Yeah. So we are um, highly invested in transition services. Um, the families have the choice of where they're going to transition their children. A lot of our children transition to the pre-K um, program in our local schools. We start that process nine months before their third birthday, investigating options for families. Sometimes they utilize outpatient services as well. Um, and we, we don't just leave them um, at their third birthday. We kind of walk them through that process every step of the way. And how many children are in, in the uh, birth to three 
process right now in, on a, in a given year? So I'll, g- I'll give you a wide view and then we can tell like personal view. Yeah. Um, we're serving 14 to 15% of infants and toddlers in West Virginia right now. That's a dramatic increase um, in the last several years. But what can you attribute that to? I think that we're getting better at finding children that have delays. Also, we've had a significant increase in babies with NAS um, and toxic exposure to drugs. And a lot of times those children qualify for our services. Um, But what we're finding is we have, we're serving more children, but with fewer practitioners. So um, Sandy can speak to and Leslie can as well. I'm one of two physical therapists for all of Jefferson and Berkeley County. Um, and we, how many kids are, are you dealing with? I have 70 some children on my caseload. I do have two wonderful physical therapy assistants that help me. Um, but we served over 500 children between the two counties in 2022, I think. Um, and so, and I, I, I like to joke, you know, I, I like to think of myself as young, but I'm not. I'm 47 and I'm the youngest PT in the panhandle that goes in person. Um, we haven't had the ability to recruit or retain younger therapists. And Why not? Pay. Uh, I'll be completely honest. Um, we love our jobs. We have not received a rate increase in 20 years. The last time they looked at our rates was 20, 2003. And at, because we're contractors, out of our rates, we pay our gas, our health insurance, our malpractice insurance, our continuing education, our car maintenance, um, our supplies, everything out of that. And so, um, and that's a reimbursement rate, correct? Is that how that works? We get paid a bulk amount and for our services, and it's only our face-to-face services. So if we see four children in a day, we get paid that rate for four children, but we are not paid for our drive time. We don't get mileage. We get nothing else. Do you mind to say what that rate is? Sure. Okay. Um, for physical therapists, it is and has been since 2003, $121.84. Um, which sounds like a lot, but it, it again, you can see like four to five kids in a doable day. Mm-hmm. And then you have paperwork and scheduling and billing and all of these things. So um, like to give you a comparison, compared to physical therapists that would go and work, say at the hospital or a rehab facility, I'm probably making, well, we had a colleague that left and I think her total reimbursement package when you put in benefits and things was close to $80,000. The job she took. Yes. What yeah. was she making at the job she had with West Virginia? Well, we all make about the same. It's that's the other thing. Anybody who works for us gets paid the same. So you know, I have a master's degree and twenty three years experience. If someone graduates from PT school tomorrow and starts this job, they get paid the same as me. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no differentiation in the state. So su- therapists in the southern part of the state get paid the same. There's been no change um, in terms of seniority or location or anything like that. And the reimbursement rate is the same as it was in 2003? Correct. Correct. And so okay. even gas. I mean, think about gas. You know, um, the gas price when we started, I think, what did we say? It was like a dollar forty-nine. A dollar forty-nine when we started this job. So just to fill up our tanks to go see these these kids, you know, we have to get rid of, we have to pay all those expenses just to do our jobs. So even just to maintain the same level of income, not even get a raise because of insurance and I mean, because of experience, you're, we're not meeting You're, you're 220 in the hole and a gallon of gas. For, correct. And you know, our state director um, and our local directors are very supportive of our work. They see the changes that we help families and they're very supportive. And they have been trying to promote this um, and, and talk about our services and the work we do. And we've had families share what Birth to Three has done for them. And they've, you know, done a great job of promoting that for us. And they've even had people question them, why do these people stay here? I mean, I don't really know very many people that would stay in a job for 20 years without a raise. Um, but I know I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I think Leslie and Sandy can chime in on why we stay. All right, let's let me, say from, let me hear from Leslie for a moment here, Sandy, yeah, if you don't mind, Leslie. Absolutely. Sure. I have probably been with Bertha Three the longest of the three of us. I started back in 1998 um, when I worked for um, Valley Health, and I would do like some contract work through the hospital system with Bertha Three. And then, um, like my friends there, we all kind of joined in full time, went two feet in the water around 2003. 
And I stick with it because it's, it is my passion. It is, you know, I, I feel like I am most impactful working one-on-one with these families in their homes. And I, I see the difference that our, our support can make in these children's lives. And it's really hard to, even though I know I could leave and, you know, make more money somewhere else, it's really hard to give up that, that passion. And I think that's why there's the group of us that have stuck around for so long. We feel that that is just uh, something we can't put a price on, for sure. I want to read a comment on our Facebook page from Moon and Mountains. We love Nicole and Sandy as our providers with BTT. Their jobs are so important and need more funding. Those first three years are critical. Sandy? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I, um, I've been around for 20 years and worked 10 years in Maryland before coming out to this system. Um, and I love this system. I love, um, I, I live close enough to the Maryland border. I could jump and, and hop right over. But um, what we've been able to do in West Virginia, we consistently rank um, in the top five across the nation for how we provide early intervention services. Um, so I believe in the system. I believe in how we work with families. Um, we become part of the family. Um, Moon and Mountains is, is a testament to that, that we still keep in touch af long after their kids have graduated. So um, uh, we stay for that reason. Um, one of the other benefits is that we're a really flexible program and flexible system. So we have providers that can go on weekends, providers who can provide services in the evenings and work around family schedules. Um, when I, um, when we all had young children, we had that ability to flex our work around when we had care for our kids. Um, when our kids are sick, we have that flexibility to provide virtual services or reschedule easier. Um, so we're, it's very family friendly. It's very fluid for what the family needs are. We're not pigeonholed into you can only do this type of service for this child. And we try to work with all the family needs. So if they've got a question that might be considered outside the wheelhouse, we're all specialists in development. So how much is malpractice insurance for your trade profession? For myself, it would be hard to tease out because my husband's an OT and we purchase it together. But it's several thousand dollars for both of us. Um, I think it's also important to know you reminded me of this. West Virginia Birth to Three is one of two programs in the nation that have met our federal requirements for early intervention delivery consistently for the past 15 years. And we perpetually rank in the top three to four for outcomes in the nation. You know, as a lifelong West Virginian and someone who roots for our state, I always say this is something that we're doing well. Let's continue to do it. Um, there's an estimation that for every dollar spent on early intervention, it's a $7 savings eventually for public education. And it make, that makes me think of that Desmond Tutu quote about you can keep pulling people out of the river or you can go to the start of the river and see why they're falling in. And when we're in families' homes and we're providing coaching, not just in our lane of, like for me as a PT gross motor skills, but family support and encouragement and enrichment of a child, I do believe that we can make changes to the family structure that carries on for a lifetime. Um, and so I think that's just important to note because it's, it is very comprehensive of family needs, not just the child's need. Um, and I've definitely seen our impact there with a variety of families through my career. Have you folks not done a good enough job of shouting out the, the the work that you do do you do you not lobby yourselves well because we're not horn tutors yeah that's the thing <laughs> yeah, well you, i've heard you 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 bang, not, bang your chest not, a little bit the prison the prison guards uh, we heard about their underpay the teachers underpay the school staff underpay but i didn't even know you existed well two things one when there's only two pts in two counties there's not a lot of time to spend advocating for yourself when you're busy seeing all the kids mm -hmm. where you know i'm starting to turn children away because there's only so many hours um the other thing is you know on a personal level i've been advocating for this with members of our legislature for probably three years now and the governor um i've written letters i've had parents share their stories with the department of health and the director of um, child and maternal health fetal services like we have tried to illustrate what we're doing um I do think we're busy, obviously, doing the work. Um, and because we're independent contractors, we don't have a union or an association. An association. Um, Is nobody in charge of you at the state level? 
mean, there, there is, is. An, there is an office for birth to three, mm -hmm. of course, but individually we are just contractors. Mm -hmm. I think we do a lot of work trying to get the word out of the work we do to keep our referrals and making sure that we're getting to the families that need the services. So that's where a lot of our outreach goes is to promoting our program to our local families. Um, we so spend time serving others and making sure they know about our services, but maybe not enough time letting our needs be known. Yeah. Mr. Hornby. Yeah. It, uh, it kind of confusing to me as, as, as it's a state funded uh, program but you're independent contractors. That seems um, a little weird to me. Is that the different way? Different programs do it differently. Okay. So, um, you know, they're in. I know in Loudoun County, if you are employed with Birth to Three, you are an employee of the state. Yeah. And you do get retirement and benefits and those sorts of things. Right. West Virginia has, I for unknown reasons, I'm not sure, always decided that we would be contractors and part of that may be because of our rural needs you know we have a lot of let's say a speech therapist in calhoun county mm -hmm. that might pick up two kids after work um on her way home or his way home we have people that do this full time we have people that do it uh, just in the evenings after their other job or just on the weekends when they're not doing their other job. So the contracting nature of the caseload really varies practitioner to practitioner. So over the last 20 years, has that line item in the budget just stayed flat? Is that what it is? And, and, and you've grown the program now, now it needs to expand? Is that What's the fix is, is what I'm asking. From my understanding, Birth to Three got a slight increase in the line item this past year, but it is, it's not enough that it would even carry over to individual rates of practitioners. Right. So, and yeah. who controls those rates of, of these independent contractors and practitioners? Um, mm -hmm. The budget that comes from the legislature. Okay. So it does mm -hmm. come directly. It comes from the legislature. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, that's kind of what we're hoping to advocate for that in, in order to continue to do this work, you know, we, we crawl around on the floor all day, but we always joke, well, what happens when we can't do this anymore? Who's going to do this important work? Because yeah, who, who's promoting the hiring of new practitioners? Our and, local and, and RAU, um, you know, they do advocacy efforts. They go out and they go to colleges. Um, you know, I do some speaking at WVU in the PT department. I tell them about birth to three. But again, if you're a new student coming out with college loans and outpatient clinics are offering loan reimbursement right. or a higher salary, you might love to do our work, but you can't afford to. Could, could they do the full-time work and then this on the side too? Sure, is, is of that course, a possibility? absolutely. Yeah, okay. and some people do that. Okay. Um, but in terms of the volume, so for example, in the past month, I've got calls to take kids in Morgantown and Clarksburg, and I, I do do some virtual work in counties, we all do, where there aren't enough practitioners, because some of our counties there is no one. I worked for with a kid in Thomas, West Virginia for over a year where there wasn't one other PT in the whole county. Wow. Um, and the cost to the parent is n is nothing, nothing right? It, nothing. It's covered through the federal mm -hmm. um, program. Absolutely. Okay. So, what would be a reasonable rate if you were going to go into 2025? Mike's a delegate. Let's say that he was the guy making the decision on your case. What would be the target? Well, I do know that a dollar in 2003 is equivalent to a dollar 65 or 64 in 2024. So if the average practitioner made a hundred dollars <laughs> in 2003, they would need to make 164 just to maintain their cost of living standards. Um, it is, it's kind of tricky because we don't all get paid the same, close to the same, but services are a little bit different based on your discipline. But I think that's what our state office is trying to do is to create a rate study to, that reflects all of the work we do that isn't paid for, such as talking to pediatricians and the CPS services and writing reports and scheduling and billing, and then comparing that to surrounding states of what their early intervention programs do. The last time we got a rate, they I believe Indiana is a state that West Virginia followed closely because they line up with us um, in terms of number of kids we serve and rates. And they did just get a bump, but I'm not exactly sure what their bump was to like per discipline. Um, but you would need a 60% bump just to stay even with where you were in 2003. Yeah. Well, and you have to look at it. It sounds like it's a pretty efficient program that is 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 working and we should probably look at that and decide you know maybe it is an investment that we can 
it save sa- money it saves through money education. Down the, down the correct. The road. Yeah. I mean, we have children. I, I, you know, some of this we can't share, obviously, because of health privacy laws. But I always say, I wish I could have a camera on me to show the dramatic difference in these kids when they start, and you think. I'm not sure what they're going to do or how this is going to be. And to see them be so independent and so immersed in their community and with their family, like the changes are dramatic in three years. And I have books and books of pictures um, and letters from families of their stories. And we've tried to have those stories sent to the legislature and to the Department of Health so they can see the work we're doing. Um, Because it, and that's, again, that's why we stay. Because why would you not be fulfilled by that? Because you can't eat. Yeah, I guess. My husband yeah. says that we're, we're part-time, mis- we're missionary therapists. Apparently. That's a, and you're on state. That's a shame. Uh, so you must provide your own medical care, too, but you're not employees of the state, correct? Correct. Right. It's another way the state is saving money, not having to pay your health care costs. Yeah. yeah. Retirement. Right. So retirement. Retirement. With, retirement. With, with the split up of, of DHR, uh, do, do you, what umbrella do you fall under with Department those three? Health. Yeah, we're Department of Department Health. Health. Yeah. And, if, and since now they are a skinnier system, just one out of three, what used to be, have they promised to look into what your rates are and find a way to adjust? From what I understand, there is a commitment to looking at a rate study, but that's all I know. Okay, very good. Well, I appreciate you coming in. Uh, Leslie, I appreciate you being on the phone, patiently waiting. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. And, uh, and I'll commit to asking some questions thank you awesome. we yes. appreciate that uh, we would love thank you so yeah. much yes see good things happened <laughs> right at least the start of a good thing yeah. right yeah nicole and sandy thank you both so much thank, thank you and thank you for the work that you do missionaries in your own state right <laughs> thanks thank you great stuff <laughs>